right, guys. Looks like we are coming online. Okay, and live. Okay. Oh, I did it again. I forgot to turn the lights on. Jay Collie, how you doing, bud? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's tilt this down just a little bit. Conrad1902 on Instagram. Hello, Archery Outdoors. Hello, Scott Schmid. Good evening, Anthony J. Boyd, Colton Crittenden. Howdy. Jay Colley, and what's up with all your laughing at me? Because you guys are hilarious. You guys weren't aware or paying attention at all to uh, that picture and what the whole deal was. If you had actually looked at it, you would have noticed that in that was an olive drab green pack, which is actually basically they just announced that uh, that's a new color for initial ascent. Scree gear, how you doing? So... Uh, Danny Coyman, so much better than debates. Glad to have something I want to listen to. Perfect, perfect. Uh, BK Wilson, pack him out. Apparel, Idaho Elk Slayer. Scott Anstein, how you doing? David Geringer, evening, Michael. Imagine that. YouTube is still sending data. I got a deal saying that uh, the restream key or this or that was uh, expired and had to redo it so oh gentry batiste look at that from youtube just popped in and so all i had to do was talk about youtube and it would have connected i like that so uh let's see david Garinger. good evening tyson locker good hello scott schmidt i found a new read that i'm liking a lot from rocky mountain good good brian cochran good evening Lori hamrick good evening who else we got here uh, Brian Verchik from Kentucky. Welcome, welcome. A.K. Norman, Chad Moss. How is everybody doing? So we'll give it a couple of more minutes and then we will uh, jump into this this evening. So, um, but yeah, anyways, Jay. So uh, two things that Initial Ascent, and I've been sitting on this news for days, so I'm glad they launched it. But Initial Ascent now has the... Uh, basically the 6k the 6,000 cubic inch bag and also they are offering olive drab so they they did have their packs only in coyote tan now um they're going to be available on the website really soon the olive drab green so you will have uh, the choices of coyote tan or green in the initial ascent there's something else that they're working on too that uh we talked about when I met with those guys Sunday evening um, that I will be field testing um, this fall. So uh, traveling through Oregon, but I'm here. Sean King, thank you for tuning in. Thoughts on Smith game calls? Which read do you like the best of theirs? Um, yeah, um, Smith, they make good reads. So they had a couple that I really liked. Um, I'd have to go back and see it. In fact, if you, uh, Tyson, if you go over to... Uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, I have done some reviews of some of their reads. So, um, but yeah, no, they they are uh, good reads. They're conventional read. So, uh, the crew at Scree can't wait to run their packs this fall. Uh, the initial ascent are great packs. In fact, the one picture that I posted actually showed the bag off of it, and you're basically rocking in day mode with just the lid, and then you have the meat shelf there. Um, but I was able, I was kind of playing around with that, that in the meat shelf area, I put my kill kit and my trekking poles and then cinched everything down. And then on the outside flap, I put my hammock and then up in the lid, I had all of my um, water purification, headlamps, lunch, and so plenty of room and you're just rocking in this. I, I mean, it's such a sweet day mode and it's nice and light. Um, really, really cool. So, okay. Uh, Jay Colley, two to three weeks. Correct. Alex, good evening. Tyson Lockert, 
Oh, and Jay, the other thing I was laughing about was you guys were, uh, you and Scott were going back and forth on that pack. We're only 19 members away over on the Patreon page at ElkCallingAcademy.com from choosing a winner. That winner actually gets to go to the Blacks Creek Guide Gear website and basically go shopping and choose any pack that they want. And then I will go in and get with Sandy and that pack will be made right there and then sent to the winner. So we're only 19 people away. So ElkCallingAcademy.com. You will have access to all the instructional videos, all the tutorials. Uh, tomorrow night is the next live Q&A for Patreon members. And coming up soon, we will draw one winner for the um, Black's Creek Guide Gear. So Matthew Flowers, how you doing? Tracy, good evening. So, all right, guys, let's jump into this. So good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy, and this is Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. The way Wapiti Wednesday Q&A works is we normally have a subject that we start off with. And tonight we're going to talk about how long should a diaphragm elk read last? So now at any time, it doesn't matter which platform you're on, whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, you can always put your questions in live and we will answer those on the fly as we uh, go along through this. Also, if this is your first time or you guys have been here a time or two and you're enjoying the content, make sure that you like, subscribe, or follow and also turn on notifications so that way you're notified every time that we go live or we upload new videos. So, all right, uh, to do Chad Moss, after a year of practicing on pink and red reads from Phelps, pink one is toast, Durham Reed is still performing, about to get some new ones for the season. So, yeah, I tried to do that because uh, I, you know, I just had that uh, elk clinic up in North Idaho uh, this past weekend. And some people in there had the pink Phelps read and some had the uh, red Maverick. And I was, I was trying to, you know, Run the test, see see which one they uh, liked better. But they uh, just kind of laughed at me on that one. So uh, Elk Bros, Hope Hall as well. Thanks for tuning in. So Moldy Reads, I need to redo my Patreon. Got new cards so it didn't bill correctly. Get it handled tomorrow. Perfect. Uh, Jim Davidson, good evening, my friend. How are you? So Shane Richters, why are some reads so expensive? I love the Carlton single single reads and get them for three dollars on Amazon. Will the others last longer? So, okay, Shane, that's part of what we're going to talk about tonight. So, um, ah, uh, that means you're out. So the backpack goes to me. So <laughs> I like that, Jay, jumping on Scott right there. So, okay, um, so diaphragm reads. How long should a diaphragm read really last good rule of thumb is one read for every three days of hunting okay um but here's the deal there are things that will increase and decrease the longevity of a diaphragm read so so basically what happens is the acids in our saliva start breaking down that latex and also start breaking down kind of that athletic tape that, uh, you know, a lot of the companies use for the tape on diaphragm reads. I'm sure some of you have been walking around the hills and it's always in your mouth and it just starts fraying and coming apart or chewing on it or this or that. So, um, the call armor, that native by Carlton uses actually is resistant to that acid. So the tape's not going to break down. So that's one reason why you're spending a little bit extra money for the Carlton reads is because that tape's not going to come apart. It's, it's basically a little better material. So the other things that can really, you know, shorten the life of your diaphragm read is sunlight. You know, if you practice in your rig, you take them out and you throw them up on the dash of your truck or your car and that sun just beats on them. That sun's just really going to break that latex down. Also, the heat during the summer in your vehicle, that heat's going to break that latex down too. So now what really started all of this was I posted a picture of some of the Native by Carlton reads uh, a couple of weeks ago or last week and you know somebody made the comment 
I think those reads are way overpriced. Well, I started having a conversation with him and I asked him, well, are, are you okay with paying a little bit extra for better quality goods? And he says, absolutely, I'm a top shelf guy. So of course I would pay. Are you telling me that re these reads are going to last longer? Well, the other thing to come to find out too, this individual choose Copenhagen. And so, I, I mean, all these things will eat at that read. But the one thing that was interesting is as I was talking to him, He's like, well, I'm a really aggressive caller and I can only get two to three days out of a read. Okay, well, we already said one read for every three days, but also from talking to him more, what I found out was he is a very heavy tongue pressure, very aggressive, lots of air pressure, lots of tongue pressure type caller, but he's using a single light latex. So basically what he's doing is he's constantly stressing and maxing out that latex, which is just going to stretch it out a lot faster and, and just really, uh, it's, it's not going to last as long. Um, yeah, it's effective when it's new because that latex is lighter, but because of that heavy, heavy pressure, that reed's not built for that. And so we continued to talk and I said, okay, well, hey, you know, you're, you're, sounds like you're a really aggressive, really heavy pressure, heavy tongue type user. You should really look at a one and a half or a double. His response back was, well, yeah, but those don't sound the way I want them to right out of the package. No, most one and a halfs and doubles aren't. You have to kind of break them in a little bit to get them to that point. And I said, you, basically, you have to make a choice. Okay, do you want to rock on that single light latex that you can pull out of the package and do every single vocalization perfectly that you want to on it and not have it last very long? Or would you rather go to a little heavier reed that is built for that extra pressure and maybe do a little bit of break in with that, but have it last longer. So single and light and wear out faster or a little heavier that you have to break in and last longer, Hmm, shorter, longer. So, so you kind of have to make a choice there, but if you find that you're using single light latex reeds and you're really blowing through them fast, you really need to take a look at a little heavier reed. Now you could still stay with a single reed, just go with a heavier latex uh, and thicker latex. That's going to be able to hold up to that a little bit better. So, okay, we've had all kinds of things rolling through here. So just set guys. Uh, Primos has several different reads. How do I know which one or ones to get? So, well, honestly, if, if you're a brand new caller, the first thing you need to figure out is the right diaphragm, the right frame size. And what I'm talking about is the metal frame. You know, these will basically come in narrow, medium, or wide. And we all have different palettes different shapes. So really, if you're brand new, the thing that I recommend a lot of times to new, brand new callers is get the black amp from Phelps, the mellow yellow from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, and the rip it red from Native by Carlton. That's going to give you a medium frame, narrow frame, and wide frame. Then you can find out what size frame really fits you the best. Once you have that figured out, it will really, really help you in getting started. In fact, I just did a lesson last week and that was the case with the individual that was working on. He could make sounds. There was a whole lot of air escaping and as soon as we got him into a wider frame, bang, I mean, the notes just cleaned up and were crystal clear and you could just see his confidence level skyrocket. So, uh, looking to have my brother-in-law stop calling for me. What's a good quality starter read? So there you go. Those, those are the, those are the three that I recommend to beginners. So, um, yeah, but Dennis, not everybody's like you and can use their, their voice. So, okay. Now the other thing that you're going to find is on those, those single 
light latexes. And, and, and we'll take the Rip It Red, for example. The reason I say this is a great beginner's read is because it is that. It's a single light latex. Very easy to control, very easy to use, but the only thing is, is once you get on a reed like this and you really start getting aggressive on your bugling, you're going to hear the reed stress. Now, if I just bugle nice and easy on it, yes, I can bugle, but hunting situations, we're getting emotion, we're getting aggression. hear that reed start to strain that's because that reed is not made for that pressure but you take something like a one and a half like the elk calling academy reed and you put that same type of pressure on it now you have more thicknesses of latex you have more of a backbone to it <coughs> see your notes clean up it can handle that pressure. It's not going to stall out. And I'm not going to basically kill that reed faster. I'm not going to break it down. So, because it can handle that. So, um, to do, to do, to last longer if you don't leave them in a hot car or sunlight. Absolutely. So, Bill Berry, welcome. I put mine in the butter holder of the fridge, like you said, boss. Yeah, so so there are things that, and then what Jay Colley's talking about there where he says the butter dish in the fridge, there's things that you can do to also extend the life of <coughs> your diaphragm read. And one of them is when you're done calling on them, just rinse them off with cool tap water and then lay them down on a paper towel but lay them down so reed side up. So if they have a tab or this or that, it will hold them off and just let them air dry and then put them in a cool, dark place. Keep them out of the sun. So, okay. Um, Pink versus Maverick, funny ads, almost as funny as Jay thinking he deserves that pack. I like it. I like how you two are going at it. Maybe you guys better start making memes about each other. Uh, team pink, but the white amp is hard to beat. So Jared, that's, that's a pretty prime example right there about that white, you know, being a little heavier latex. The pink is actually a little heavier latex as well. Uh, but the white is just a little bit heavier than that. And, and, and that's the thing. And, and, and really you're only going to figure that out just by trying different reads. And like I said, a lot of times with these thicker latex, um, you know, the white's a great example. The white really doesn't cow call really that well right out of the package. But you take a read like that or, you know, the Elk Calling Academy read or even the 450 from Native by Carlton or the Deuce. If you take those heavier reads and you just start ripping good hard bugles on it don't even try to cow call just take them out of the package and just rip a good 20 30 hard hard bugles good aggressive bugles where you're putting a lot of tongue pressure and a lot of air pressure on them you're going to find that that latex is going to kind of settle in and then on a lot of those you'll be able to you can really start doing some nice cow sounds. Uh, the more I practice with the native ECA read, the more I'm liking it. Yeah, and that's how that ECA read was was designed because wanted to give that backbone so that it has longevity in it. There is a little bit of break in time in it, but once you get that thing broke in, man, you can do a, a lot of things on that read. And that's the thing too with a heavier read that you guys will notice too is when you're out there hunting and that adrenaline is just really going and you're just amped up and you jump in that good hard bugle, those little heavier reeds are going to stand up and they're not really going to squeak and pop like those lighter reeds are. So now re remember, single light reeds 
are, are really designed for beginner callers. Once you start getting into an intermediate and really an advanced type caller, you need to go to a heavier read because you can do a lot more with your pressures. So, ha, ah, Tutu, Mark Anderson, definitely some of the best calls out there. Talking about the native uh, by Carlton's fire. Does fireball hurt your read? Yes, fireball can hurt your read. So. I love the aggressor read from Elk Addicts and one lasts me most of the hunt, but I do carry more than one. Yeah, so um, how many calls you figure in a day? Um, you know, how many how many reads or, or how many times do I call? I mean, I, I'm pretty much calling all throughout the day, except for, you know, those little, little periods where we are resting. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of people that I mean basically are calling from sun up till sundown. So, but just kind of rule of thumb, like I said, if you're wondering how many reads to get grab, figure one read for every three days. And the thing is, is is if you are going with heavier reads, break all of them in before you go. So, and in fact, a lot of times. Um, I'll use that travel time up to camp uh, to break in a read or break in a couple. Um, I normally have several different reads on me at one time just if I want to change up the pitch or tone. So, uh, friends don't, friends, <laughs> come on. So, same here with putting them in the fridge. What pants did you really like from Scree? Those were the hard scrabble pants. Uh, the hard scrabble pant from Scree is, I, I, they're some of the most comfortable pant, um, pants that I've ever, ever worn. And actually I just got uh, their shorts a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the hard scrabble pants. John Tim, good evening. So only bull I called in was as a new hunter with their pack bugle. Okay, you guys are talking about Primo still. Um, Bill, good evening, Michael. Just over two months till showtime. I know it is coming quick. Jim Davidson, Reed Quiver Express, great for drying your reeds out. Yeah, I'd show you the Express. And, and, and that's the thing that you guys can do too. So this is, this is um, Bendable Products Reed Quiver. It's clear on the back. Um, or not the reed, reed quiver, that's the reed pouch. Um, what you can do is if you do a lot of practicing in your car, you can have something like that or the reed quiver express that has four slots in it. When you get to work or you're done practicing, you know, you're going to be out of the car for a while. Take those reeds, throw them in that pack and take them inside to work with you. So, you know, throw them in your desk drawer, throw them in your locker, just depending on, you know, wherever you work, but don't leave them in that hot vehicle we've talked about you know time in the vehicle is a great time to practice uh, but you just don't want to leave those coming out so um i have found that the new pitch black series from phelps is awesome it's the perfect combination of the all-around package and, and and yeah mike the the thing with the pitch black series that's what it is it's it's the same thickness on the latex, it's just how they're built and how they're stretched that each one responds and acts a little bit differently. And uh, that's a really good set there that kind of gives you a beginner and intermediate and an advanced read or a light pressure, medium pressure, heavy pressure, you know, type collar. So uh, Matt Jones, when are the Scree solid colors coming? I don't know. Make sure that you follow uh, Scree's Instagram page, like their Facebook page. Uh, they've been kind of dropping hints lately uh, of some of the new things, and they've actually been um, kind of showing some of the new products that are coming out. One of them is a fleece lined, heavier weight hard scrabble pant for later in the season. Uh, they actually just came out with the Kanadi Bottoms, which is the 300 Merino wool, which is heavier. So make sure you're following and, and stay on top of that. 
Uh, the Stock Archery, Native by Carlton, Do Dirty Deuce. The Dirty Deuce is a nasty read. That thing is is awesome. It's It was almost kind of an accident when we came up with that. Um, but yeah, that Dirty Deuce is pretty, pretty insane. So uh, do you have used... Oh, do you or have you used Hex or do you like it? Do you think it works? Um, yes, I have used Hex. In fact, I have four or five sets of it. In fact, when Mike first came out with Hex, uh, we were one of the first groups that he gave some sets to. I, I do think it works. Um, it definitely does, you know, really block your electromagnetic field. Uh, two things with Hex is one, it definitely is warmer. Uh, because it has actually more carbon in it than carbon suits uh, because of the way that they build the hex suit. So keep that in mind for early season. Sometimes you might just want to wear the hex top by itself. The other thing about hex is if you're hunting in a group, everybody needs to be wearing it. So, um, I mean, if you're the shooter out front and, you know, everybody else is back behind a ways, then, yeah, you could get away with that. So, but yes, the hex does work. I do think it is uh, effective. So, Michael Hamilton, dang, I'm late watching my granddaughter and got distracted. Not a problem. So, Scott, reads are generally 8 to $12. I spend about $60 per weekend in fuel just to scout. Find a read you like and buy a bunch of them. And, and, and the other thing, too, is, so... Okay, you, you find your favorite read. Um, it's not a bad idea to find a couple of others that you really like also and, you know, have those because it basically, it's just like going fishing, okay? You don't just take one plug or one spinner. Same thing with diaphragm reads. I... I I've been there before. In fact, a couple of years ago, I remember kind of bugling into this basin and, and nothing wasn't getting any responses. And I said, okay, I said, let me, let me do one more bugle before we leave. And I switched to a different read that actually had quite a bit higher pitch to it. And as soon as I finished that bugle immediately had a response. So, so there are times just by switching that read, and going to a little different pitch um, can get a response. So, uh, Nicholas Curry, when did you come out with your own read? Sounds good. Um, thank you. The ECA read from Native by Carlton has been out since March, April, somewhere in there. And they're available. If you go to Native by Carlton's website, uh, the ECA read is in there for purchase and has been for... A little while so and for those of you guys that really like the Marco um, I haven't brought any Marcos in for a while just because it's been really really hard with customs we've had several shipments that just disappeared or got sent back or just really some odd things um, but uh, yeah for those of you that you know liked the Marco that is from Wapiti River Outdoors that's another read that I worked with Travis on to uh, kind of design and go to you he does still have those available you can actually go to Wapiti River uh, directly Wapiti River Outdoors directly and get the uh, the Marco so uh, when I run with reads, I have a ton of different ones and I use the game changer a ton and it has really changed the game. So the game changer has changed the game. I like that, Mike. So yeah, I, I constantly, um, I, I, I mean, on me at all times, deuce, dirty deuce, 450, ECA. Um, and I will also um, have the Rip It Red in there too. Now, here's the other thing that you can do too. If you have, are your reeds made in China? No, they are not. All reeds are made right here in the U.S. All of the native by Carlton reeds are made in Colorado. Colorado. Montrose, Colorado is where they are. So, um, But if you have a reed that you really like the way it bugles, but maybe you don't like the way it cow sounds, okay? 
I would say on that point, add one of these into your arsenal, an open read cow call, because you can do cow vocalizations on that open read and do your bugling on that bugle read that you really like. Now, yes, you're, you're still going to have a read in your mouth for when that elk is up close to stop them for the shot. Um, but it, it, at that point, it doesn't have to be a perfect cow call. So, so keep, keep that in mind too. Um, what are you using for game bags these days? I'm using the, the 6 a.m. game bags um, or Viam, V-I-A-M that a lot of people you know call them it's actually 6 a.m they actually have a set i field tested them last year um gave some feedback to tristan actually made them a little little larger this year so he's been calling them that they're they're my set but if you go to their their website uh v-i-a-m outdoors you go to their game bags look for the one that has the pink drawstring on it so um, but that's, that's a set of bags that I use. They are bone in bags, uh, but they do also have bags that are bone out. He actually just launched a new set of bone out bags that, I, I mean, the weight on those bags are just in, insane how light they are, but they work really, really well. They do let your meat breathe. They do keep flies out. So, um, do you ever use the bull calling cow bugle? The bull calling the cow bugle, it's basically just a lip ball or a display bugle. Bull calling cow, it's just another name given to uh, that type of bugle. The lip ball, display, dominance, it, it has a lot of, lot of different names to it. Uh, but yes, the lip ball, I, I do use quite a bit in my setups. So uh, I love the Marco, but the two weeks wait after ordering is a killer. Scott, anything worthwhile is worth waiting for. Uh, <laughs> you'll just have to, you know, keep that in mind for the two weeks. And, and that's all part of, of it having to come through the customs from Canada. So uh, Nick Stevens, got to have options. I got quite the stack of reeds. I've blown different reeds into the same canyon, making the same bugle and had a bull answer to one and not give a crap about the other. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's a point. Sometimes it's just a little change in pitch that, you know, really will really make the difference of getting a response sometimes and not getting a response. So um, make sure to press the frame in good on the Marcos before you use it when it's new. Actually, Hillbilly Hebrew will probably be okay this time of year. That last batch, he actually did those during the winter when it was like six degrees and that messed with uh, the glue in that tape. That's, that's why those were, but still, that's always still a good practice. I still always do that. And what he's talking about, when you get a read, you know, make sure that you take the tape and you really press that tape down onto that frame and make sure that it's seated on there. It doesn't happen very often, uh, but sometimes you'll see it more during the winter, during colder times, that the glue in that tape won't heat up enough to really adhere to that metal frame. So, but still, um, that's just kind of a normal practice that I do with any read is just really, you know, press that tape down on there. So. Okay, uh, let's see, what else did we have? Um, how to get ready for hunting. So basically this time of year, it's, it's definitely practicing the calls, practicing shooting, um, you know, working on your conditioning, your physical strength, uh, your cardiovascular, and really this time of year, I am working more on endurance. I'm not really lifting a lot of heavy weights. I'm wanting more muscle endurance than, uh, you know, strength. Um, and in fact, Elk Bros put a video on their page today that I thought was a great video that showed a couple of ways to really work your hip flexors. Um, cause we don't really pay attention to our hip flexors until we're out there on the mountainside and continually stepping over blowdowns. And then all of a sudden right there in our hips, we start feeling that kind of twing, that pain. That's our, that's our hip flexors. So, uh, Western contours, what's the trick with open reads? So, okay. 
the the thing with open reads is and and in fact um yeah i'll answer this real quick and then i'll i'll, I'll go into the other so the deal with open reads is lip pressure and you can run open reads one of two ways you can run it with your top lip or you can roll it over and use your bottom lip everybody has uh, you know better control out of their top lip or some people have better control with their bottom lip but basically it's putting lip pressure down to get that high note and you'll kind of play with it a little bit but the other thing too is if you take that call and you put it at a little bit of an angle when you put it in that will help with your lip pressure as well um, so if you don't have much pressure it's just gonna sound like a duck but as soon as you um, put that pressure, it goes up. So what you're going to do is you're going to put that pressure to get that high note, and then you're just going to relax your pressure a little bit. Or if you want to roll it over and use your bottom lip, So, so guy, it's just, you know, playing with it and playing with those different lip pressures on that to get that higher note. So now this is, this is one thing that I talked about in the clinic this weekend. So how many of you guys have been to the Native by Carlton website and checked out their custom cow calls? So their acrylic barrel or burl wood. But the thing you're going to see as soon as you get on there and you see $75 for the call. And I asked everybody up there, how many of you jumped right off the site immediately as soon as you saw a $75 price tag? Every one of them left their hands up. Well, here's the deal with this, and maybe a lot of you guys don't know this, is this call actually comes with five different reads you get a skinny heavy skinny light wide heavy wide light and a medium so five different reads which means five different voices which means five different tones which you can basically change those reads out to get the tone that you want but you can also change it up if you want or you could double stack them and create a double read if you want it comes with two or three of the, the bands, uh, two extra of the, um, the blocks to lock that read in. Uh, in fact, this weekend, I'm going to be filming a video on those and showing how to change those out. So really, you have five calls for that $75 price tag. Go into any store and gra grab five open read cow calls from other companies and see how much money you spend. See if you're going to be over that $75 price tag. So that right there, $75 for those customs from Native by Carlton, but you have five different reads that you can really custom. That to me, I think is a great option. Plus the fact that, uh, you know, acrylic, acrylic's not affected by the cold like plastic or wood can be. So your tones are always going to be, you know, really sweet. So Andrew Tucker, I see an opportunity for some ECA read holders in the future. Hmm. You mean like these right here? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Bendable, Bendable Products um, actually does have a full line of Elk Calling Academy. Uh, the Reed Pouch, the Reed Quiver Express, which is the four slots, they're all branded with the ECA logo. Those are available over on the website right now. So, uh, Scott, endurance check, shooting check, practice calling check. You got it. That's basically kind of what you need to be doing you know, right now. And the shooting is the important thing that you're really trying to do that every night or every other night if you can. So, uh, Sean, I use my teeth. It tickles my lip too much to use it that way. And, and, and yeah, guy, that's a good point. Some people with the open read cow calls will actually use their teeth on the read to put that pressure instead of their lip. So, so if you guys are struggling with an open read cow call, try different things. Try using it on your top lip, roll it over, try with your bottom lip. If that doesn't work, roll it back up, use your teeth on it to get the pressures and just play around with it. But it's the pressure on that reed. And here's the thing too, 
is you know a wide read versus a skinny read you know a skinnier reads not going to take as much lip pressure or uh, as much pressure to operate uh, a wider read will typically you know take a little bit more pressures too so uh, do you think is a, a rifle is better or bow for elk I I'm a bow hunter Sammy I, I love archery hunting um, I just love getting as close as possible and and to me it's the challenge of of you know harvesting an elk with a bow so for me personally i'm going to go the bow um other people they may lean towards the rifle size so uh jay collie me 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 i have one and love it talking about the rip it so danny coyman and a light wallet he <laughs> Well, I, I mean, how many open read cow calls have you bought over the years? Because, you know, you got one and then you used it for a little while and it's like, uh, you know, I'm really not digging this sound or, you know, maybe I want to switch it up. And see, that's the thing. You buy one, you're locked into that sound. We, we talked about carrying different reeds to change the pitch. Well, imagine taking that to camp with you and y you have the ability to change to a different read and give a different pitch or different tone right there so uh i didn't hear which open read is that this is the native by carlton this is the belled they have the bell they also have a magna ported um like i said different options of the acrylic or burl wood so um few different few different cho choices on there so i uh, can't shoot with shoulder pain waiting to hear how well you like the triax i danny i still have not even found a triax to even try so i i apologize so uh matthew flowers i bugle outside at home a lot my neighbors don't like it so much ah that's okay um I, I'm pretty fortunate where I live. I've got a couple of neighbors that, uh, you know, if they're having a barbecue or something, they'll send a message, you know, text and say, hey, we're barbecuing RSVP if you want to come over. And a lot of times I'll just throw the window open and rip a bugle out the window. Just to, that's that's kind of the way that I normally RSVP to them and let them know that uh, that I'm coming. So. All right. Do all of the Native by Carlton open mouths come with multiple reeds? Nick, not all of them. So they do have kind of their entry level line that is the green weenie, uh, the loud mouth, and the mini mouth. The mini mouth is basically, you're going to see it, it will remind you exactly of the old Carlton fighting cow. It's that small, compact, really loud really high pitched just obnoxious read but or, or open read cow call but works really really well it's the customs the ones that are 75 dollars that um there's even some in there that are burl wood and fancy wood that you can get up to 150 dollars so but yeah those are the ones that are going to come with the five different reads so uh scott where's the hunting partner app um i don't know so I have had, I've been so focused on the website and the e-course guys. I finally have all of the pieces for the website that I'm sending an email over to the web developer tomorrow uh, to have him take a look at all that and make sure that is all really going to tie in and do what I want it to. And then basically... Uh, this weekend, again, I'm going to be filming a lot of the chapters for the e-course. So we are getting really, really, re really close for the website launching and the e-course and the shop and everything all on there. So uh, Michael Hamilton, living in the middle of a big city. I was outside practicing bugles. After about 15 minutes of it, someone bugled back from a couple of blocks away. There you go. Perfect. So uh, Jim Davidson, do you have a preference between the wood or acrylic? I like the acrylic. Uh, reason being is, like I said, acrylic is not affected uh, by cold temps. That's why you'll see a lot of duck calls and a lot of goose calls that are made out of acrylic because they don't 
seem to you know have a problem with that cold weather sometimes uh, with wood or plastic, you can kind of get some expansion or contraction of those materials in colder or warmer weather, and they'll have just a little bit different sound. Uh, but with the acrylics, I've noticed that it's been kind of uh, even sound across the board. So uh, you're lucky. My neighbors are <laughs> nudities. No barbecue with them. I don't have that in my uh, my neighborhood. So I... <laughs> I guess I am kind of kind of lucky on that one. So, oh hey, if you guys don't have your shirt for Fourth of July, go check out Pack 'em Out Apparel. Uh, those guys, this actually just showed up the other day. So, uh, do you know how the Wyoming tag leftovers work? Went to apply, but was confusing. No, I don't. It's been a long time since I've applied for Wyoming, and in fact, uh, we really weren't applying there for a while. We were just buying bonus points. So. Uh, sorry, Danny, I can't help you uh, with the Wyoming app. Uh, Go Hunt is a great resource for that. Um, I think there might be a couple others out there, but Go Hunt is a really good resource. So, Nick, thanks for the info. They may be spendy, but they're sweet. I think there is an awesome gift for any friend or family who elk hunts. Yeah, and, and you know, there's artwork in it, the bands. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see this one. Um, I'll kind of hold it close. But it has the Carlton. But then if you can see, it actually has elk tracks on the band. So they definitely are beautiful calls. I can guarantee you will pay more attention to these <laughs> because they are a little spendier. Um, it's it's not one of those that uh, you're going to stick. But but the other cool thing about them too is they come with this little hook and swivel, so that way you can just hook it right on the D loop of your pack. That way you still have access to use it and you don't have to worry about dropping it or leaving it on the mountainside. So, all right guys, we are oh, just a little over 10 minutes out. So we are going to go last round of questions here and then we will uh, wrap it up. Vipers, Coco, hello. Uh, Western Contours, don't go to buy the license, go to apply for, had the same issue Monday for Wyoming. Okay, so Danny, a uh, guy is saying don't go to buy license, go f uh, to apply for license on the Wyoming site and that should help you out. So, uh, Michael, when hunting elk, what can you get away with? What can you not get away with? Uh, is it their nose, eyes, or ears that are their main defense mechanism? So easily, their nose. Uh, their nose is the one thing that you're never, ever going to be able to beat. Their eyes, sometimes you can. Their ears, sometimes you can, most definitely. But their nose is the one thing that you're not ever going to beat. Uh, reason being is we're never going to be 100% scent free. So they're always going to, if they get downwind of you, they are going to get a nose full of our nastiness. And they're not going to stick around. But as far as their eyes and movement, um, you know, I, I said this either last week or week before, I don't remember what it was, but if you have an elk coming in and you know, you just see it and you're like, nah, I'm not interested in shooting that elk or harvesting that elk, that's a great opportunity to see what you can get away with. What movements can you get away with? But the one thing I found is most of the times in our setups, that shooter is in the shadows. So don't ever set up in the direct sunlight, set in the shadows. And as long as your movements are slow, you'll be amazed on what you can get away with. It's those fast twitch, fast movements that really they alert to. So um, slow movements. So, and as far as their eyes, or I mean their ears, yeah, you can definitely beat their ears. There's there's things that you can do. I mean, they can certainly hear really, really well. Um, and in fact, we just kind of talked about that. But, um, you know, if, if you're kind of walking through the forest, you kind of hear that bull growl. He's he, he's just basically saying, you know, hey, I heard you walking. You know, what, what are you? You can do a small little cow call back and, okay, you're an elk. I'm cool. So, uh, hunting idaho this year do you know where i can get a game management map yeah you can actually go right to uh fishing games website 
So Idaho Fishing Game, uh, you can get game management maps there. You can get unit maps. If you actually, um, if you use some of the mapping services on your phone, like Onyx or Base Map, uh, there's there's actually a new one out now to Outly, O U T L Y. Um, Outly, uh, any of those have the ability that you can turn on game management uh, layers, and then you'll have all the managements there. So. Uh, what do you do about moisture getting on the the reed? Um, the the open reed cow call uh, reed and affecting it from making calls. Okay, so what you can do a lot of times with open reed cow calls is if you take a little paper towel and spray just a little bit of Pam on it, and then you put that paper towel up underneath the reed and you wipe that Pam cooking oil on the shelf underneath the reed. But the one thing about the native by Carlton reeds is their shelf actually has little gritty bumps on it. So it's not a complete flat surface. The fact that it has those little bumps, that is one of the things that actually helps eliminate that reed sticking. And uh, you don't have to worry about that. So, uh, but a lot of times if you are out there and there's excessive moisture, you can also take the tail of your shirt and just put it between the shelf and the, and the, the reed and just wipe that off. So. Um, I have been practicing with the Carlton 450. You recommend, and though the higher pitch is a calling, I am hearing something like a second tone underneath it. Any idea why? Yes. So the 450, because you have those two different layers and the way that second layer is, when it's brand new, you will kind of get, especially in the higher notes, you'll kind of get this little, that little, that second read will kind of break loose a little bit and just kind of give a little vibrato or vibration. As you call on that read more, those two layers actually marry together and combine into one and that will go away. That is something that's pretty common with the 450 and the one and a half. It's just how he stacks those two layers. Uh, but that only happens when that reads brand new. The more you call on it, that will disappear and it will just be um, in that. So, okay. West Coast elk love to hang up in the brush. What's the best way to bring them in close when you're solo? Well, that's that's the thing that you know they're 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 kind of hanging up because they're expecting one of two things. Either one, they're expecting you know that they should be able to kind of see that elk or smell that elk or or whatever at that distance. Um, but when you're when you're solo, it a lot of times, especially in that thick brush, you, you have to call and move and call and move and call and move. And sometimes with him coming in and hanging up, sometimes you just need to let him lose interest, turn and go away. Let him get far enough that you can call and then move up again. A lot of times they'll come right back to that same spot again because they've been on that path. They know it's clear. There's no danger. They're good with it. So, and that's where in that thick brush setting up, um, and the one thing you want to do is as soon as you call, you need to move. So you can't be sitting in the same place that you called from because they will hang up. And I know in that thicker areas, your shot opportunities are really, really close. And that's where if you can set up that they have to come through that to be able to see. And sometimes they'll just sit out there and just kind of stare at the spot and listen. You know, they're not necessarily listening for more elk sounds, but they're listening for support sounds like hooves or this or that. And that's where, you know, you could snap a stick, you could roll a rock, you know, do something to produce or some support sounds to get him to go, okay, yeah, that isn't real elk walking. I'm gonna walk on in and check it out, so. Uh, how fast can you change the reeds? So on that on that native, you can change them really, really quick. Um, I mean, minute, minute and a half. So as long as you have everything out and, and, and ready, it, it really doesn't take that long because all you're doing is, uh, I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. So, but right here on the reed, if you see right there, there's this little retainer block. And all you do is I have a small little tiny screwdriver that I just push from the backside here to push that little block out. So I would take the band off, 
push that block out, then the reed's free, put the new reed in that I want, put that block back in, push it all the way in, put that band on, and then you're good to go. I would definitely say practice with it. Um, you know, practice changing that reed out at your house a few times so that way you've kind of accustomed to it or even, you know, at your base camp. Um, but once you kind of, you know, work on popping that out and replacing that a couple of times, you could do it on the mountainside on the fly really quick. So, uh, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for another great Wednesday video and Q&A. You are very welcome. BK Wilson makes perfect sense. Thank you. Yeah, and honest, I, I did the same thing when I first got the one and a half and the 450. Um, you know, I noticed it, it didn't happen on the first couple of times I bugled on it. It was like third, fourth, fifth time. Then I was like, wait a minute, what is that sound? And I got on the phone to Mark and he started laughing and he says, oh, yeah, the way I build this or do that. And, you know, because he likes that little break that that extra little vibrato in the top it does it, it is just a little bit different tone and he he really likes that um but yeah i found that the more that you just sit there and just scream on that thing gets those two to to marry together and then you can flat out just get some really really nice high pitches so all right guys four minutes have any questions last chance last opportunity So tomorrow night is the next Patreon live Q&A. We'll go live at 7.30 over on the Patreon page. Also this weekend, I am filming the last little bit of the peepless videos. So the peepless uh, or shooting without a peep, um, how that whole setup is and what I did to accomplish that. That video is going to go live next Friday. So all of you that have been really interested in the uh, peepless video, that is coming up Scott Anstein question mark so for those of you that that don't know I've been doing some testing I actually yanked the peep sight out of my bow uh, just to see if I could shoot accurately with it and honestly my sight picture is so much better I mean I'm shooting groups like this out at 50 yards and I haven't been able to do that for a while just because you know, my eyes are, are getting a little worse and trying to, you know, look through a peep and it was just restrictive. And, and so I'll talk about it more in the video, but basically by yanking that peep out, my sight picture just became crystal clear again. Um, I have faster target acquisition. I actually have a better sight picture in low light situations. So if it's first light or last light, I can see, uh, you know, a lot better but there definitely are some things that you need to do to ensure that you have that consistent anchor point and i will um include all that in the video but anyways i'm filming the last part of that do you believe location bugles are better or cow sounds for finding bulls in mid-september both so <laughs> hail belly hebrew i know i know but i'm sorry but with the uh with the surgery and all that, I, I'm, I'm kind of behind the eight ball a little bit and still playing catch up. So, so anyways, uh, where I said both, anytime I get to a location spot, I always do a couple of cow sounds first before I bugle, just in case there is a bull that's within a hundred yards. The cow sounds a lot of times will be that soft that will get his attention and get him to bugle back without me just jumping onto a loud bugle and scaring him. So. Uh, I take my call to work and the guys on the job site freak out when I call. So I was talking about that this weekend because sometimes, especially at sports shows, I always have a diaphragm read in my pocket. If we're out to a restaurant, I'll pop one in my mouth and keep my mouth closed and do some really soft cow calls just to mess with people in the restaurant. I had a guy at the Hayden Clinic this last weekend that is in the military, just got back from deployment, and he showed me pictures and videos of when he was in outer space. And he had a stinking elk call up there that he was elk calling in his space suit. And the guys outside were trying to figure out what it was. So he kind of trumped my little restaurant story. All right, guys. One minute left. Countdown has started. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Hopefully the information kind of helped you 
on selecting a diaphragm read. And if you're really going through a diaphragm read quickly, hopefully that will give you information on possibly why, especially if it is a single light latex. If you are really blowing through them quick because of aggressive collar, start looking for a little heavier latex or maybe a one and a half or a double. All right, guys, as always, keep calling, keep practicing. Most importantly, though, have fun. And we will see you guys next week on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Q&A brought to you by Elk Calling Academy. Have a great week, everybody.